Welcome to Lettering Comics, Lettering and Affinity Designer. I'm Robert Johnston. Hello again. Today we are going to letter a page in Affinity Designer. Uh, I've created a template in Affinity just as it looks in Illustrator with all the margins, all the same sizing and everything. Um, it's always helpful to create a template in whatever program you're going to use. That way, you know, you can set all the parameters and you'll never get out of whack on anything. The font sizes, balloon strokes, all that good stuff because it happens. People do lose control between pages, uh, all these things. So it's best just to, cl to knock it all out in one template and continue to use that template going forward to letter your whole project. All right, so you're going to pull in your page, your 11 by 17 page, into the document, the lettering template. You're going to shrink it down to fit it. Uh, and then you're going to just, you know, begin to letter. But first, you know, take a look at your layers. Make sure they're named appropriately and whatnot. And, uh, you know, before you want to move on, you want to get a good foundation of this thing. All right, so next, then you're going to copy and paste your actual script into your document here like I'm doing, like you see me doing. Then I'm going to change the font to my lettering font. I, uh, and then uh, you know, start pasting it in. Um, you'll see I'm choosing some colors for the caption boxes. I find that yellow works best in a, in a lot of situations because... You know, you try sampling from the color from the some of the predominant artwork, and it just doesn't look right. It's not a, like attention grabbing. So I go with the yellow. So as you can see, I am zipping through this, um, copying and pasting, putting them into my caption boxes, formatting them a bit. Um, they all look left aligned for the moment, but there we go. I'm doing centering because you always want to have these things centered. Okay. You know, you want to try to mimic professional lettering as much as possible um, with whatever you're doing because sometimes it really takes the reader out of the experience when it just looks like you haven't paid attention to these small little details. And, um, Spacing also really comes into play and handy. Um, on this panel, it looks like I really didn't give myself a whole lot of room for some lettering because it looks like I put a caption box directly over that creature, and that's not what I wanted. But hey, push comes to shove, you gotta do what you gotta do, you know what I'm saying? So I find a way, I put it over his shoulder area there, and that seems to work okay. So now that I've got these caption boxes all figured out, now I'm going to do uh, a connecting balloon here, much like you could do in Illustrator. Um, this involves a, a, a compound group of sorts. Um, Affinity Photo does allow you to do the same thing where you can create the balloons and the tails, link them together with one uh, continual stroke, and then you can edit them after the fact, which I really, really love and think it's one of the best things about Affinity Designer uh, in terms of replacing Illustrator in your workflow. Um, not to mention the cost is well worth it. I think I think right now as I speak, you can get this thing for like 20, 25 bucks or something like that. Uh, really well worth it. Um, and I'm sure that you will think so too. Okay, go up to layer and create compound. And then you will see the connection between the balloons and the tail. So as you can see, you can successfully letter your entire comic in Affinity Designer with no issues. Uh, the price is great. There's really no downside to um, purchasing this program um, for your comic lettering. So I hope this was helpful. Um, I will in the future be going in more in-depth lettering uh, while I letter my own comics in Affinity Designer and I mainly use Clip Studio and Affinity Designer for, um, for my comics. Okay let's try this again. Now we're going to use a blank document <clears throat> and we're going to create some balloons 
Um, we're going to take this one here. As you can see, I've got some pieces of everything. I've got in this template, Affinity Designer template, I've got word balloons. I've got font, tails, and they're all vector, by the way. So as you can see, it doesn't quite match. You just go up to layer, create compound, and as you can see, it fits together nicely. And you can still access the tail by just opening up that little layer group in your layer stack. <clears throat> Pretty handy. Um, you can move it around you can do all sorts of great things with it. Um, it's really versatile and this is how I like to letter. I like to be able to edit my balloons after the fact and even copy and continue to reuse the same balloons um, on different pages. You know, let's let's create uh, like a combo of different balloons. Um, <clears throat> we'll just create another balloon, duplicate it, get the pen tool, and then just make a tail all the way through it. It can be one continuous stroke or, you know, or whatever you want there. And you don't even have to close it. You don't have to close it right there. You just select all your objects, go up to layer, create compound, and there you have it. You have a nice multi-segmented word balloon. Um, look at the edge there. It's kind of not pointy. So you just move it around. You'll see the point appear. Move it around to your liking, but sometimes maybe that's not the best way to go about it. Um, so you just go up to the meter limit here, and you just start altering that number up or down, depending. And you can see it's not working. So I wonder what's... Okay, let me play around with these. No, nothing. Zip, zilch. Oh, it's the group. So you got to do the meter limit on the group. There you go. All right, pretty simple, pretty easy. Um, let's make another set of balloons below. I'm gonna turn off this info layer group so I can see what I'm doing. Just create a couple uh, ovals, filled stroked ovals. Uh, I use a 1.2 stroke. Um, that looks best for me. Uh, I, me I think I actually measured it out on a comic book, an actual comic book, you know. <clears throat> so you, you may just make a few ovals and let them vary in, in size until you're, you think you've got enough. <clears throat> it's pretty easy. Some programs only allow you to do one balloon has a group and then you got to somehow segment the rest of it together. But this one here allows you to do uh, one thing through, select them all, go up to layer, create compound and voila, you've got a multi, multi segmented and editable group of word balloons. They look great, and they're great for you. Hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next one.